the center of the great estate stood the country house. It was used to impress and entertain influential visitors. In today's terms, it was at least as expensive and exclusive as owning a private jet. Our journey starts here at Hengrave Hall in Suffolk, built in the reign of Henry VIII. Hengrave Hall was built by one of the richest men in London, Thomas Kitson. Hengrave was Kitson's main country residence. It is laid out around a courtyard, typical of the Tudor period. Most Tudor houses where rooms opened off one another, Hengrave has corridors around the courtyard, providing access to the rooms on each floor. Hengrave Hall was not a single family home, but was built for an extended household that included relatives as well as servants. This kind of Tudor house had only one large room, the Great Hall. This was the heart of the house. The household met and ate here, but the hall was chiefly designed as an impressive space in which to receive and entertain visitors. Kitson, his family and honored guests sat at the top table, basking in the light of this spectacular bay window. In itself, a major status symbol. display his wealth through glass, so could others. Hardwick Hall in Derbyshire is one of the finest surviving Elizabethan houses. Its masses of glass and huge height were extraordinary for the period. It was built about 70 years after Henry by the celebrated Bess of Hardwick, Countess of Shrewsbury. This house is her vision and is signed with her initials, Elizabeth Shrewsbury, all along the top. By the 1590s, the inside of a great house was as grand as its outside. At Hardwick, there is still a great hall, but it functioned mainly as an imposing entrance. Upstairs, there are impressive and specialized public rooms, what we now call state rooms. Best lived on the first floor, but the state rooms were on the second. Guests were brought up this beautiful stone staircase to the magnificent high grade chamber. This was the ceremonial center of the house, where Bess received them. The chamber, at least three times the size of the Great Hall at Hengrave, is lavishly furnished with a set of Brussels tapestries. Bess had a passion for textiles and built up a vast collection. It cost even more than the house itself. Next to the high grade chamber is this immense long gallery, running the whole width of the house. This was a new kind of room. Bess and her guests came here for exercise, but it was also another opportunity to impress. Bess used it to show portraits, which displayed her ancestry and political connections. Surprisingly, there are even rooms on the roof. It's hard to believe that this was once a banqueting room in which a dessert of delicacies would have been served. From here, Bess and her guests could enjoy the view of the deer park and all that she owned. years later, we have arrived in another world, the un-
unstructured natural surroundings of Hardwick are very different from the gardens here at Chatsworth House in Derbyshire. This was the Baroque period when gardens were changing on a grand scale. Their design was now being considered alongside the house. The formal straight canals and avenues of French garden design were being introduced all over Britain. Here at Chatsworth, there have been many changes, but the spectacular Baroque water features still remain. Water was everywhere. Water gods, trick fountains like the willow tree, and a monumental cascade, which was one of the grandest in the country. However, the house itself was always the main focus of the garden, and from all points of view, your eye was led back to it. To explore the inside of a Baroque house, we've travelled a hundred miles to Benningborough Hall near York. Like the gardens at Chatsworth, the layout of this Baroque house was dominated by straight lines of symmetry. During the Baroque period, specialised rooms were grouped together into sets called apartments. These were formal rooms occupied by important guests or the owners of the house, and they worked like a home within a home. On the ground floor of Benningborough, there are two apartments. When an important guest stayed in the apartment, people could come to pay their respects. How far they were allowed into the apartment depended on their social status and on their relationship with the guest. So most people never got beyond this large reception room. If you were important, you were allowed an audience here in the bedchamber. Only a select few got as far as the dressing room. But you were very privileged indeed if you got as far as the closet. This was the smallest room of the apartment where the most confidential matters could be discussed. All the doors are arranged in a straight line. This kind of linear arrangement was called an enfilade. It echoes the straight garden vistas of the kind we have seen at Chatsworth. Here, the enfilade runs the whole width of the house joining the rooms of both apartments. In 250 years, we've come from Hengrave, with only one major room, through the development of specialized rooms at Hardwick, to the formation of the apartment at Benningborough. But here at Kettleston Hall near Derby, the whole center of the house was built purely for the entertainment of visitors. The house was designed by the famous architect Robert Adam, and his elegant decorative style can be seen throughout. The family's private rooms and service areas are separated into two symmetrical wings at the ends of curved corridors. Thank you for visiting the theatre. We're now taking on the solution the our cafe and the shop will close at 5 30. Please make your way there now if you wish to make a purchase. Thank you. Thank you for visiting the evening. We're now taking on the solution our cafe and the shop will close at 5 30. Please make your way there now if you wish to make a purchase. Thank you. Robert Adam took the most impressive elements of ancient Roman and Greek design translated them into a modern English setting. All these beautiful rooms, filled with art collections, were made simply for display. But 
this display of wealth, what I've limited to the house. The whole of Kenilston Village was moved and replaced with this artificial lake, simply to improve the view. Some 50 years later,